In this video, we are going to add an interactive tooltip to the line chart that we've been developing in the last two videos of this series. No matter where your mouse is on your visualization, it will always add a tooltip to the appropriate point in your line, and we're going to walk through all the steps you need to do to achieve that. To begin, we're going to make a few changes to our HTML file that we've been using. Like always, all the code for this tutorial is linked in the description below. You can go get it, follow along, or paste it right into your project. We're going to add a style tag in our head area of the HTML. We're going to add two new blocks, a rect block and a tooltip block. You can reference this code again in the link down below. We're going to be using these in our code that we're developing next. So once you've added that to your HTML file, you can head into your script. So very first thing we're going to do is declare our tooltip. So we're going to make a const called tooltip. We're going to use d3select to select the body of our page and we're going to append a div to it. We're going to give it a class of tooltip. That's what's going to reference our style here where we've got some styling for our tooltip when it shows up. Next, we'll go through the code that we've developed in the last two videos. Let's go down here below the line. We're going to add a circle element. That's what's going to let us know what point we're seeing the tooltip for when our mouse is moving around the visualization. So we're going to add a circle and use SVG append to append the circle. We'll give it a radius of zero. We're going to start at zero. That way all the circles aren't just showing up all over the chart. We'll give it a fill color, a stroke, a little bit of an opacity so we can still see the line behind it. After that, we're going to create what gives us the ability to, you know, move our mouse anywhere on this chart and have the appropriate point show us a tooltip. And that's what's called a listening rectangle. So let's declare a new SVG element and call it listening rect. We're going to use svg.append to append a new rectangle element and give it the full width and full height of our visualization. Let me move this down here. Once we've declared our listening rectangle, we're going to give it an event that happens when the mouse moves. So that's what's happening here. We're saying when your mouse moves over this rectangle, do something. And what it's going to do is all this stuff down here. This can feel a little overwhelming. There's a lot happening here. So I'm really just going to give you the broad strokes of what's occurring in this code here. Quite frankly, you don't need to know exactly what's happening in here. And if you'd like to, we could always dive into each individual constant in here. But the bottom line is that all of this code, especially this bisector here, is taking the position of your mouse and finding the closest data point in the vis. That's what's happening here. And then it's putting the X and Y position of the date Excuse me, it's putting the x position of the date and the y position of the population into these constants here, which we will then reference in a moment. So all this code here is doing that for you. It's letting your code know what the closest data point is in this line to where your mouse is. And we'll see that in action momentarily. That belongs here under this comment. So using these x and y positions, we're going to update where our circle that we declared earlier is on the visualization. To do that, we'll just call our circle and set its CX and CY positions. When we hit save, it breaks the chart because I forgot to close the function. So we can add our curly bracket here and close all this off. And our viz comes back. And now it's currently setting these X and Y positions, but nothing's happening. So let's console log this and we'll see that something is actually happening. Let's take the X position and we'll look at our console and you see all those numbers. That's the X position of your mouse constantly updating. Pretty neat, right? So we'll get rid of that console log and we're going to give it one more piece of code here. We're going to update the radius of our circle. So really it was putting a zero radius circle onto all those points. So we're going to use a transition call. We'll have it go really fast. So just a 50 in here for the duration and we'll set the radius to five. Now, when our mouse goes over this, we've got a little circle that's following our mouse around on our line. Pretty cool. But we also want a tooltip. So we're going to now call our tooltip that we declared earlier and give it some styling. And once again, we're referencing our X position and our Y position. I've made some adjustments here so that it's not just sitting on top of the circle that we made. And then we'll use this HTML call to actually put some content inside of this div. And so we're going to say the date is this data element and the population is this data element. Now, when I hit save, well, when I, when I move this down here, and hit save, there's our tooltip showing up. Oh, but what's that? It's stuck. Whenever I leave the viz, it just kind of hangs out there. So we need to tell D3 to remove these elements when our mouse leaves the chart. So we can do that with a mouse leave function. 
and we'll just transition the circle out back down to a radius of zero, and then we'll tell the tooltip to not display itself. We hit save, you can see it already disappeared, and there we have it. There's our tooltip showing up wherever our mouse goes, and then when our mouse leaves, it's gone. That's the end of the series. You have now built a basic line chart, improved it, added some grid lines, some custom axes, and added a really neat interactive tooltip. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.